All right, everybody, Jeremy Solt here and Kyler behind the camera. Welcome to Solt Productions Hangar here in Syracuse, Utah, uh, where we're going to end up doing an unboxing of another item, which we're super excited about because we were kind of, we were pretty much unexpecting this item. We didn't think that, we didn't even know it was even coming. But anyway, that being said, a uh, little bit of backstory. So we had ordered the T7 Red Hawk, which is right here. Um, we just got the unboxing done and we have the first flight or the maiden flight done. And so those videos will be up soon whenever I get a, a chance to get all the editing in there. So they'll, they'll be up before this gets posted. So stay tuned. If you haven't seen those and you're watching this, please go back and see that. This is actually a neat little airplane. Kind of, <laughs> it's pretty fun for the size um, and uh, it looks good in the air. Um, but anyway, so we, we ordered this, we got this on there and then, uh, essentially what happened is, is I get a surprise delivery notification and, uh, find out that we now have a Aerofoam MB 339 105 millimeter airplane, which is super cool because I don't have one of these. Um, I have... Uh, I've purchased several airplanes in the, in the last year, lots of things. I bought my ginormous T1A10. I've got uh, the Global Jet Club F86. I bought two T45s, uh, turbine versions, and we also bought Kyler himself, his Aerofoam Turbine L39 camo scheme. So we, we've purchased a lot of airplanes uh, and a lot of other small ones too. We've got you know, E-Flight F-16 upstairs, we've got all kinds of stuff. But anyway, not to, not, not trying to say that we've bought a lot of stuff, but uh, essentially what I'm trying to say is that we've got a lot of experience with a lot of different models. And uh, when this arrived, I was confused. So I ended up getting a hold of Banana Hobby and found out that they sent us the MB339 to do an honest and independent review so that we can help with with questions in the community and on social media and everywhere that I routinely post or whatnot. So eventually I'll be able to post photos and videos and all that of this, this uh, sweet looking jet. Um, and then when somebody has questions, I, I can be able to answer. And so we're gonna hopefully do the unboxing fairly quick so we're not gonna take up too much of your time. And then I'll try and do a build video. Um, what was explained to me is that the manual that it comes with, it's a, it, it, it gets you through it, but uh, Ralph Salgado and uh, Carrie from uh, Banana Hobbies have, have came up with their own particular manual to, to, to actually follow that um, more than the actual manual um, when you build this. Because there's, there's a few little things, just like with any model you buy or any model that you end up uh, getting from somewhere. The manuals, they're not always perfect, but uh, you can thank Ralph and Carrie for trying to make that right. Um, uh, one of the other big notes that they mentioned to me is to ensure, absolutely 100% ensure, that if you have any of these Aerofoam 105 or bigger motor setups, absolutely take off the nose cone in the motor and tighten the fan and the, the, the spindle. Tighten it up because that is something that is is, is pre or, uh, pre flight maintenance that you should always do anyway and on any EDF. I mean, I've heard of so many fans coming off on first flights, second flights, even third flights. You know, they work great the first time, but but that's something to always routinely check and make sure it's not going to come off. Uh, but anyway, that being said, um, we're going to break into this. Um, before we ended up doing this, or I, I jotted down some information on there and I actually found out that this airplane currently is on sale from $195 to, uh, uh, sorry, not $195, why did I say $195? Uh, $1,095.90 to $995.90. So right now, you're getting $100 off immediately off of buying this Aerofoam airplane, which, uh, I mean, $100 is a pretty good amount. I mean, that's that's pretty close to 10% right there already. Um, it comes as an eight channel setup, 
12S motor, they want uh, you to run a 4,000 to 6,500 uh, mob batteries. So because it's 12S, you're gonna need two of those or you're gonna have to have a really big battery maker. Uh, <laughs> so uh, the wingspan is 63 inches, which equals 1,600 millimeters. And guess what? The length is exactly the same, 63 and 1,600. Um, the fan is 12 blade on there. I believe it's chainsaw. I'm not sure exactly, but we'll find out once we get in here. The ESC is 160 amps and it has an 8S or 8 amp UVEC in there. And then the other cool thing that most EDFs don't come with, brakes. So it's got JP brakes on there. So I believe they're JP, but they're very similar to JP if they're not JP. But anyway, that being said, let's break into this. And hopefully you guys are as excited as I am because again, first 105 millimeter setup and we're going to be getting through this whole thing together uh, as a team on this one. So I'm going to set down the Red Hawk over here because we don't need that. We're going to need space for this big boy. So um, yeah, that being said, we're, here we go. I'm going to quickly find a razor blade. I thought I had one out here already because the only thing that I've done is I cut the, the, the box lid off. So that, um, so that we could actually see a better into the box. Um, yeah, the razor blade went over here. <laughs> so I can open up the bags a little easier. And then I got a stand back here to be able to put them on once we end up getting the jet built pretty much. So here we go, there's, there's how it comes. And this thing's a monster. If it's anything like my T45 and the L39, um, I'm going to be uh, ecstatic about this because they fly awesome. Um, I am super uh, in love with my Aerofoam airplanes. <laughs> um, I, I can't deny that. All right, that's just that's just where it is. Uh, I have so much fun flying the L39 and the T45 because it's it's minimal stress. And a uh, little dude can attest, they're pretty fun, huh? Yeah. Um, unlike flying a, you know, $10,000, $6,000, you know, whatever $1,000 turbine, um, you know, where you're worried about it every little second, these Aerofoam airplanes are pretty dang fun and very low stress because they're fairly, and I say fairly, fairly minimal in regards to cost, which is, uh, which is a good thing. Uh, for everyone so you can get into one of these pretty pretty decent so all right so I'm going to slide this over to the side so that we can just open these up um, hopefully I don't bug you guys too much with videos but uh, just trying to get out there and help everybody out with uh, any kind of information I can provide and the best way to provide is to show it straight up so that everybody sees it and they can come up with their own opinion based upon it and not have to take my opinion. Um, and that's that's my goal is to get you straightforward information and straightforward looks at every little thing on there. So here we go so far. Right wing. What I like about the Aerofoams is this quick connect. It's almost like a computer connection. I cannot tell what it's called. But uh, just a quick connection. Most of the Aerofoam setups have two screws on top. This one has a very similar two screw setup like the L39 and the T45. We got our landing gear in here, which is tucked in. Servos, I believe that these servos, if I remember reading right, are about 25 gram servos. Get with the manual on there and, and that'll tell you but um apologize i tried to see what i could have information but i forgot to write that down um but there we go everything looks good i don't see any marring dents dings or anything like that um one of the other amazing things that i found about these that, that also makes it a very cost worthy airplane um is the foam density on this i mean this foam density is, uh, it's pretty dang dense. Um, I don't know what to compare it to that anybody, just average Joe or 
or whatever might be able to do that. But it's it's some of the most dense foam I've seen on an airplane. Um, but that being said, this foam is the exact same foam as the turbine version of the uh, T45 and the L39. And so there's, there's your wing looks. What we're going to do is we're going to turn them because eventually we're going to get a fuselage in here. We'll hopefully get a full quick on there. Uh, wing tanks. It looks like wing tanks or fuel tanks. And actually, you know what? These, this is actually wing tanks, but it is two different versions of the wing tanks. That's pretty nifty. That's uh, that's something that doesn't usually happen. It's giving you options of with, without, or now you got with, without, and 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 or, and or as an option. Um, so if you look at that, let's pull those together. I have all four of them. Okay. One looks shorter than the other. Yeah, one's thinner than the other one. So they look like. Like L39 a little bit on the ones. And so there we go. Let's see. Um, so what we'll do is we'll put the one kind on this side. And that's the other thing too. If you look, you don't even have to use a tank. But me, I'm gonna I'm gonna put a tank on there because that's just one more cool factor involved on this. So there we go. So there's the one kind. And then you got the solid round. If you look at this, look at the differences. Can you see that? You've got more of an oval on that side. And we'll put that one on. I think we're gonna go with the big, big roundies on this. What do you think? They look good. What do you think? Which one do you like? I like the right. You like this one or this one? That one. This one? Yeah. You like big roundy? Mm-hmm. I like Big Roundy too. Looks more like a T33 on that. Yeah. Pretty cool. I, I didn't see any lights on here. Did you see any lights, little man? Um. Or did I cover them? Oh, I covered them. Yeah. So I guess if you put these on, then you don't get lights. Okay. All right. Well, that's something. That's, that's different. <laughs> a little different. So what I would do, and I'm going to end up probably doing, is I'll probably figure out how to run that to the outside. So that's just me, because I'm a, I'm a light guy. If you don't know me, I'm lights. <laughs> right, little man? Yeah. All right, let's throw the rest of this foam out of here. And let's get, do we want to get the nose, or do we want to get the whole fuse? Let's get the whole fuse. Whole fuse. Okay, you're the boss. We're going to call that. We'll get the nose last. Okay, actually what we're gonna do, we're gonna we're gonna put the stand up here. That, that's the smart idea. Smart idea? Alright, good. Glad I made a smart idea. <laughs> Alright, let's see, is there an open? Be careful when you're opening up any of these bags on any airplane's fuse locks, because usually there's one side that's open. And I've actually dropped an airplane. <laughs> Out the one side, so uh, we've all learned um, from that. All right, so immediately out of the box, I do see one problem, and I'm going to turn it to this side so you can see it. Nothing, nothing major, but there's definitely one thing, and that is this ejection sticker yes. has decided that it does not want. Well, actually, it wants to. It wants to eject. So it wants to eject off the airplane. <laughs> and so we do not have an ejection sticker, but that just adds to the weathering factor. <laughs> okay, so here's the fuselage here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of untangle some of it in here to see what we got going on before I speak it. Um, it looks like We've got the ESC mounted here, but it's uh, it's loose on the fuselage. And so, what, where did it go? I'm trying to figure that out. It looks like, 
sorry, I got all the bundle of wires right here. Let me try and show you what we got, what I'm working with here so you can kind of see real quick. So there is the inside so far. And so look at that. I believe that this also comes off. Look at that. Yep, we'll do that too. So that's the tray for the back. All right. And yeah, it looks like the, uh, the ESC needs to get uh, the wooden block glued down. Or it needs to get anchored down. So what we'll do is we'll pull that out. Yeah, it looks like the glue was just not on there enough for the ESC. And so I think it gets glued up on the bottom of this tray. Anyway, so we'll figure that out. So that's something that, uh, that again, if I wasn't doing an honest review, I wouldn't be telling you about this. So that's something that needs to get re-glued on there. So that's, we'll address that at the proper time when we're doing the build. Okay, so I'm gonna slide this back up in here just so that I don't mar up the outside fuselage. Okay. All right, so, um, I'm gonna actually come up here just a little bit so that we can show this a little clearer. Can you see that a little clearer, little man? Yeah. Is that better? All right, so, so it is, yeah, change on fan. Again, what you gotta do is you gotta end up taking this uh, front end off. Okay, so you'll unscrew the front and then you'll actually get a hold of it with some, uh, um, uh, essentially a wrench and you're gonna tighten that down just to make sure this fan doesn't come off because if that comes off, that's gonna be very bad. Um, so what we got here is you got the Aerofoam U-Beck in there. I'm gonna show you a separate one over here that's just the same except for it's not in the airplane. This is your landing gear in your door controller and this is your brake controller. So if you're ever familiar with JP brakes, you'll know exactly how those brake controllers are. Um, if I remember right, um, in somebody else's uh, thread that this spar right here, our fuselage bracket, this is designed mainly for the turbine aircraft to hold the fuel tank. And so you will actually remove that out of the fuselage. And then your batteries will sit right up in here in the tray, um, the tray area right there. So hope, and then your, and then this will be your, uh, your, this will be your flight pack. Okay, and your receiver power. And then you got everything else associated here. Okay. Anybody have any questions on that? Kyler? <laughs> Since you're the only one here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, oh, I forgot to mention. Uh, so thrust tube seems pretty, pretty decent. It's one of the same ones. Check this tape around the back of the motor to make sure it doesn't come off. Motor spins freely. Um, you got your connections back here for your, your horizontals on. Um, I'm going to probably trim the back here. So this is the thrust tube, so you can see that. That looks like that's dangling out a little bit. Front. Let's get the front out. All right, so first impressions, taking a gander. It looks absolutely perfect. And so just like with the, uh, the, uh, the turbine versions, essentially you just screw this on in the front and it sandwiches on. And I haven't had a single problem on any of my airplanes with this fuselage being bolted together like that. Um, and if you ever do work an airplane, you can buy just the front or you can buy just the back and save you money. So that's smarts in that. So that's pretty neat on there. So we'll, we'll uh, set this down so it doesn't fall, fall off. Um, canopy. Okay, neat thing about these canopies is, is you can buy these. There's pilots that are available to buy. And if you look at the bottom, there's a piece of tape holding two squares that are inside the cockpit. And you can put whatever pilots you want in there. Super easy and you don't have to peel the sides to get to it, okay? Um, latches, 
uh, all, all my other aerofoam latches, they're all, they're all super awesome. They're doing good. And my, uh, my actual first T45 that I still am flying, I'm sitting at, in my, my logs, I'm not, I can't tell you exact amount, but I believe my number was about 108 flights on it so far as a turbine and, uh, and it's going, going strong. So now let's do vert, vertical, right? Your arm's getting tired, hopefully not. You doing good? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, so this connection, um, there you go, there's your connection. You got, a, you got a hard plastic around the bottom. That hard plastic is going to end up sandwiching the back end here. You've got a neat little Y cable. Okay, but the Y cable essentially goes to one light and one servo. So it's just a way of powering up that light. And that will get put in, making sure that my wires are in the right directions. Always verify. Okay. And we'll push that down in there. Wind it up, and then we're going to stick this one up inside. And we're going to go down. We're going to go down with this one. All right, should I have some needle nose ready to go to help me with this? Usually, I do this stuff with needle nose. Mm -hmm. Just trying to give you guys at least the simple look how this will end up being. We don't get it, I'll get needle nose and we'll get this in there. Alright, to the side. Alright, wires in. <laughs> Sorry, this is taking a minute. But again, this is what uh, this is what nobody shows you. They they just build it and and everything's jolly and grand. So these little holes, they got a click, and it's getting there, but it's not all the way in. So I'm off just a little bit on this. All right. Well, if I guess, I guess if I can't get it right now, again, all my tools are out in the garage, <laughs> which I should have been a little bit more prepared for. But yeah, you can uh, when you when you get this going, you can feel it click. And that's part of the the way that these hold on. The T forty five is similar, but not as hard to to get there. All right, there we go. There you go. Clicked. There you go. <laughs> now it's in. But I'm gonna verify that with I'm gonna get all the wires a little bit better on there. Um, later when we do the actual build. All right, so I'm going to set this over here. So here we got the horizontals. And again, like I said, this the foam density of this is 
pretty dang awesome. You actually have plastic hinges in there that are that are you know solid. I mean they're I mean, I'm tugging on it and they're not going anywhere. And so same plastic setup right there, servo in it, metal arms, metal everywhere that they can, servo connection right there. And it looks like we need a spar. So the spar is going to be in there, but I'm not, I'm not going to put it in yet. We're just going to temporarily set this in there. Mm -hmm. For the sake of time, but just don't want to get a, a nice view of the airplane semi together. All right, so same on this side. No marring, no dents, no dings. And surfaces are connected nice and securely. I can't even see this side, so I don't even know why I'm putting it on. Yeah. So that's just me, is put it on. Put it on. All right, you have, you have anything to say, little dude? Um, it looks good. Think it looks pretty good so far? Yeah. All right, so the wing spar, um, it comes with the two pieces. I recommend that you find the end of the tape and unwind it. When I did my T45, this was kind of a pain in the butt to get exactly um, all the tape off and it was kind of a bugger to get in and out but it still worked very well once I got all the tape off. Where does that one go? This one goes in the front I think or in the middle of the wing and then it runs through here. Okay. So yeah the, the tape is kind of funny to get off but if you don't do it right it just gets sticky and stuck. Take your time. Sorry that this taking the time is on video. <laughs> Five hours later. later. <laughs> I can hear another carbon rod on the inside of here, so I wouldn't doubt if it tries to jump out at me. <laughs> yep, so that'll be the tail, I think. So we'll put that in a minute, but... Um, so this looks like it's going to go right about there with the wings. For the sake of not dropping it, we want to... Put, put the other one on. Oh, you got to put both of them on. Yep. Yeah. So we slide that one in, and then we slide this one in. I, I could come hold it, but I'm holding the camera. Yeah, normally little dude's my holder. What I'm going to do is I'm going to jump around and hold it. That's a... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Again, this is straightforward. So we're... We're doing this the same as you guys are watching, so there's no, no cut to this. There we go. In there. Walk in there. I think it looks pretty good. What do you think? Yeah, I like it. It's getting bigger. Yeah. Slide that back on. We'll put this one in and on. The color scheme, what do you think about the color scheme? I think it looks pretty good. Yeah, it's gonna be easy to see. Mm -hmm. Yep, I think it's gonna be very easy to see. Okay, so it's got a couple ventrals down in here. Yeah. So they're gonna go on the belly, so we don't need to open those up, but you can tell where those go. Looks like a shroud. Probably for the fan. 
see where that says. Um, again, you're going to get a downloaded version from Banana Hobby. But, I don't know where this goes, but uh, I'm going to bet, oh, it might go back here. It might be an extra part. Well, stay tuned, and I'll put in the comments what that where that goes. And you got just all your actual linkages that you have to uh, put everything together with. Here's the good part is, every bag has an actual name on it. So you got rudder, flaps, ailerons, elevators, right? So that's pretty nice. I don't know. If who, you know how long whoever's watching this is is, is uh, has been part of um, building but man I tell you a long long time ago when you would get a balsa airplane and everything was in one bag oh my goodness it was so tough to uh, <laughs> to get anything built or even figuring out where it even went so I'm gonna just do a quick temp install of a couple of these bolts so that we can get the full together look. It's big. It's big. Is that all you have to say? Huh? Once you get the nose on, it shows <laughs> that figure. So again, it's 63 inches. Okay, get another one. And so these, uh, they have castle nuts, I think is what they're called, castle. They're the grabbers that uh, are what hold these together. Alright, again, this is a temp install. I didn't put it all the way tight, so this is probably going to end up showing just a little bit of sinkage. Yeah. Okay. And then it looks like you got to shave just a little bit of foam right around the edge, or not foam, plastic, around this edge just to uh, Get, it on there. get the canopy to fit on there so that you don't mar this edge. So it's got a little bit of fine tuning around the edge. Probably back here a little bit too. If you can see, it's got kind of a little edge where it's a little bit larger than the foam. So I'm not going to press it on there. We're going to set it on there so it's kind of close. Um, Uh, yeah, the T45 I had to do the same cutting. But anyway, um, again, pretty dang neat, pretty simple um, build. It'll be you can probably get this thing built in 45 minutes and ready to go at the field. Um, I think it looks great. Paint on it's fantastic. It's uh, actually really good, really nice. Um, Foam density, you know, uh, so paint, thinks awesome. Foam density is definitely a positive. Uh, and if it has anything to do with the similarities of the turbine airplanes that I've got, this thing's gonna rock. So that being said, we're gonna be done with this video. If you have any questions, send it to me in the comments. 
find me on any of the social media posts that I'm going to do with this because uh, I'm pretty excited about it. And so again, thank you Banana Hobby for an opportunity to give you an honest review on this airplane. Um, stay tuned for the live, uh, well, not the live, but the first flight. We might even do it live because that's what we, we like to do. We like to make it to where there's no question about any kind of modding or, or, or editing out certain things. Um, we like to get just the first flight on there, knock it out. You see everything. We post a whole entire unedited video and you can come up with your own opinion on the airplane based upon us flying it, but with what you would normally see, you can just go into your field and, and have somebody else fly it. So you'll get an opinion based upon that. So imagine that. Um, again, thank you, Banana Hobby, for the opportunity. Yeah, you really surprised the heck out of me and Kyler. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll see what we can do about, oh, let me one other thing too. So we're gonna hopefully bring this airplane down to uh, St. George for their uh, President's Day fly, um, which is uh, March 4th through the 5th, 4th and 5th. Um, and we'll have it down there. And uh, we'll see about what we can do about getting uh, other people to do some honest reviews on there too. But uh, that being said, if, if I feel that you're good enough to fly and I see you fly other airplanes, we'll, we'll get you probably on this too. So I don't want to, um, say that everybody will be able to fly it, but we'll try and see about getting a few people to fly it and get their honest reviews too and see what they think. Um, because I can tell you as much as I want, but if I can get a few people to fly it that, that are also uh, independent, um, that I think will, will give you guys a better opportunity to make a decision of whether this airplane's for you or not. And so again, Jeremy Sold here, Kyler behind the camera. Hi. Thank you for doing that. Um, if you want to see more on this and other airplanes that we fly throughout the year and years that we've been flying, um, hit up our YouTube channel. Um, we are Salt Productions, that's S-O-L-T Productions on uh, YouTube. So thanks again for watching and spending quite a little bit of time with me and Kyler, and <laughs> we'll catch you all later and happy flying. Thanks again.